So my name is Sissy Taylor. Uh, we have Be Happy Honey. We started beekeeping in, I think, 2007. And other than that, prior to that, I didn't really have any interest in beekeeping. And you can see how you can see through over here on the right, ish, like in this area. See if you can see an egg in the bottom of one of those. It was just kind of a new thing. There was a class offered at the San Marcos Library on beekeeping, and I thought, that sounds interesting. All right, Gabe, just a little bit under the... There you go. Okay. It was just a lot of fun. We all enjoyed it. We did it as a family. Um, the girls helped with all parts of it, and so it just became kind of the family hobby. Pretty sure we lost her. And that's, you know, you have a 50-50 chance. My name is Casey. I'm Sissy's daughter. Um, I've been involved with Be Happy Honey since I was, I guess, nine. It's fun. It's kind of calming. The bees sound scary, but they're really not, as long as you're protected and everything. It kind of feels like you're helping them out, especially when we can catch a swarm or something like that and give them a new home and give them food and take care of them. I like the feeling of doing something to help them out. So my favorite part of beekeeping is being in the yard with the bees. I enjoy being out um, in the field with them and opening them up and looking at them and just kind of hanging out with them sometimes. And I'll go out by myself occasionally and just kind of hang out and, I don't know, talk to them. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but um, it's fun. I like it. It's very grounding for me and soothing. And so it kind of de-stresses me. And, and then when you get out there and you do the bulk of your beekeeping in the summer, so it's hot. And so you're sweating and it's just kind of a getting back to nature for me, I think. So I think that's my favorite part. I like that it's a very natural thing. I mean, the, the bees, you know, bees live on their own, but I think being able to be involved in kind of keeping them alive and kind of assisting in a natural process feels really cool because you just kind of let them do their thing and um, you kind of just come back and check out and you can watch insects kind of building in a way you wouldn't usually be able to. I'm surprised at how calming it can be once you get all the stuff on and they kind of it feels kind of like you're in harmony with them. There's a slight hum, and it feels kind of relaxing. I didn't expect it to be relaxing. I thought it would be, it would feel more like a chore, but it feels like a fun hobby instead. Okay, lid case. The most fulfilling part of being a beekeeper um, is something I didn't expect, and it's that it's a family thing. Uh, my whole family is interested in doing it, and they want to see it succeed, and they want to continue doing it, so that, was pretty cool. When I went to Texas State, my major was geography, and I did urban and regional planning, but I also did environmental courses, always at the root of, I think, everything we do, you know, from keeping animals to growing gardens. Uh, beekeeping just goes in naturally with that. Oddly enough, that was emotional for me, and I don't know why. <laughs> My name is Daniel Hosage. Uh, I'm doing everything here from vegetable gardens to pollinator gardens to prairie revegetation to uh, stabilization of the various features uh, involved in the construction, maintenance, and operation of the quarry. There are very few people with my skill set. I've always loved plants. They cannot speak for themselves. They are rapidly disappearing. They are the backbone of life on the planet. And I always kind of took the attitude, somebody's got to do it. So they wanted a vegetable garden for disabled people. So they got a vegetable garden for disabled people. So I can teach them how to twist the squash to get it to break off and what's ripe and what's not. And, uh, it's been kind of fun too, like get them outside. Really good to see them having such a good time and feeling productive. Uh, I mean, it was so glaringly obvious 
to the employees and people that had been coming over to the pollinator garden. The first year we did it, you'd open the door, there'd be three, 4,000 butterflies in it. You're lucky to get, last year, you're lucky to get 200 butterflies in it at any time. If you wonder why this spring all the trees and stuff flowered, the blue bonnets have been out so long, it's because they're not getting pollinated. When a flower gets pollinated, it's done its job, it falls. There's nothing to see. The reason the blue bonnets have been blooming for two months is because they're not getting pollinated. The biggest thing I think has been the change in our uh, climate here since 1996. In 96, everything just that summer is uh, absolutely amazing to see. From June through October, you'd stand, look out, see these clouds going from the south to the northeast. By two in the afternoon, thunderstorms would build up three to five. You could see them up to 80 miles away and see the lightning and rain come down. Once a week, 10 days, it was your turn for a half an hour of heavy rain. That all stopped and we now have summers of these clear blue skies. We've got the Martindale Market going. It's a monthly fourth Fridays market. The market's become really important to me because it brings the community together and gives local vendors an outlet where they really didn't have one before. I used to take part in this market a lot when I was younger when someone else was running it and it was always cool to have it here and have some life in Martindale. We have 30 vendors here that are just setting up with all of their products. It's a lot to handle but it's definitely worth it and a lot more people are appreciative than they are upset about anything. It, it levels itself out. Um, there was a Martindale market several years ago that another girl had tried to keep going, but she was not successful. We wanted to see it continue and to grow because we think that Martindale is a great little community. It's, it's a great um, diversity in the vendors themselves. We want to support them and support what they're doing and they're, you know, for the community. My job is to take care of the animals. I do a lot of things. I go to the markets sometimes and sell our product, and I uh, generally take care of the livestock. I love animals. Animals, you know, heal you. If you're around animals, they teach you uh, how to be and how to treat each other and how you can not treat each other. I love nature, so it's my number one thing. This land I've always been, it, it's a beautiful place. It, you know, you get here and and if you don't love it, you probably are not looking at it right or it's heavenly. And if you put into it, it gives back even more. And that will go through my children and continue to their children and to love nature. I mean, that's my number one goal. I don't care if they're gay, straight, black or brown or red or white or short or tall. I, I would hope they learn discipline, how to take care of things and those things take care of you. Whenever my family told me about my farming history beyond my father and my grandfather, what I would consider gardeners, it started to make sense. Like, I think it was in my blood. And it's hard fucking work. If you want to do this, you need to dedicate your life to it. I'm not talking about forever. But whenever you are doing this, you need to dedicate your life to it. It's not something that you can do on the weekends. It's not something that you can do as a hobby. To provide your community with food and to be reliably providing your community with food takes a lot of work. You give up almost everything 
and you give that to your animals or you give that to your produce and it's all worth it. It gives it all back. That's the coolest thing. It, it, it gives every bit of it back.